Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM. We go over songs that came out this week in EDM. That's pretty self-explanatory, I think. There are 21 songs that I wanted to talk about that came out this week, and I must say it was an absolutely killer week. Three standout songs uh, and only one song um, in Bad or Trash, which I uh, didn't quite enjoy. So for a whole week and really one song I want to talk about that I didn't really like a ton, but way to go. Uh, way to go, EDM, collectively. You had, you had a good week. Uh, but let's hop into it. This is the uh, Bad category to start. Um, songs that I did not think were great, Again, my, just my opinion. Uh, we've got Losing My Mind by Bose and Mingo. Min, min you? Um, but uh, yeah, this is everything I dislike about commercial EDM right now. It's a short runtime. I think it's a minute 55. Uh, simple beat, census lyrics. It just doesn't do anything for me. And uh, I did not enjoy it. So that is that. And that's the only song this week that I sort of want to talk about that I uh, didn't like. But uh, moving into the meh category songs I thought were just meh. We've got Fatal, uh, the Mortal Kombat 1 kind of track with Zoo. Uh, Zoo has partnered with Mortal Kombat for this new track, uh, but kind of in the in that sense and in that collaboration, kind of lost a lot of the classic Zoo atmosphere that, you, that I've come to know and love from his discography. And uh, yeah, the song just feels a little cheap to me in the end. It doesn't feel like it's a, a true to form Zoo track, so... Then we've got uh, Estevita, the Dioro remix originally by Marshmello and Faruko. Uh, this is pretty much the original with just a more prominent beat to it and with a slightly different synth. Uh, it's a minimalistic remix that uh, just does enough to differentiate itself from the original. But um, yeah, I, I thought it was it was okay. That's why it's here in meh. Then we've got Excalibur by Riot. The uh, spoken parts feel a little awkward for me. Uh, the first drop is fairly solid trap, but the second drop is just kind of the kind of bland Riot that I feel like I've been getting or we've been getting from this new era of Riot that I haven't been on board with. So that's Excalibur in my opinion on it. Then we've got The Rapture Part 3 by And Me and Black Coffee, a fairly standard house track here. I am disappointed by the lack of anything really going on, despite its really long runtime at about just seven minutes. Um, I do love longer songs, but when there's nothing going on for those seven minutes, I don't like longer songs. Uh, it doesn't really have that X factor that kind of uh, progressive house tracks with this much length tend to have on them. So uh, not bad, but uh, not, not astounding. Then we've got Hammer Time by Spag Hetty and Company. Uh, I will say the drum step final drop was a welcome surprise here, and it uh, did leave me a little bit wanting more. I just felt it was a little bit too short. Um, but yeah, that that mixed with a kind of, I would say, weak first half and first drop. I just thought it was nothing special in the kind of dubstep world in that first little bit. So uh, yeah, not too keen on that track in particular. Uh, then sadly in meh, I would say we've got Bleep Bloop by Tokyo Machine. Uh, the unique take on Bass House that is, I would say, well mixed together with a kind of uh, more breaks influence that Tokyo Machine is more known for. But uh, yeah, I mean, this re thing remains pretty heavy and still digital sounding, but it's just a more subdued track that is stylistically flat throughout, I would say. It doesn't really get, it's not very dynamic. It kind of keeps its 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 linear run time. It doesn't really do a ton. I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to explain, but um, um, yeah, I don't know. It mixed in with a short run time. I'm just wasn't a huge fan of this track. So I don't know. Not 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 for me. Not for me. Uh, but we will head into the good category now. Songs I thought were uh, pretty solid. Uh, we've got Eclipse by Slushy and Protostar. Uh, pretty much imagine an Arabian-themed drum and bass track, but without the kind of woodwind string instrumentation that goes with those Arabian themes, like the... I don't even know how to <laughs> do that exactly, but um, yeah, you kind of just got the backing beat of an, like an Arabian style drum and bass track. And so it's it's an interesting take and something I hadn't really heard a ton of before. And uh, I, I did enjoy it, I would say. Then we've got Bombalaya by Denmo and Wolfie Lights. This is a simple liquid drum and bass track with a cruising atmosphere. I uh, got a bit of a Latin pop influence to it. Uh, nothing crazy, but a uh, just a consistent track, I would say. Then we've got uh, Now Say Para by Biscar and Afterclap. Uh, one of the first Monster Cat songs that I think really actually blends Instinct and Silk together. Um, it's a free-flowing track with raw instrumentation and uh, those kind of organic sound design or that organic sound design that really does kind of feel like it meshes together both a Instinct style and a Silk style of song. Uh, a kind of blending that I feel like we, yeah, haven't really heard a ton uh, in the Monster Cat's discography, but uh, definitely on the simpler side of things with this track, and uh, I did enjoy it. 
Then we've got Yesterdays by Effin, a very vibey trap track with a bit of a kind of garage undertone to it. Um, one of the more chilled out tracks in Effin's discography, and I thought it really worked. Um, also love the kind of brass and instrument instrumentation, a little bit subtle there. I don't know, know if it was a sax or a uh, trumpet, but uh, yeah, just something really simple at the end and uh, really keeps the whole thing together. So. Then we've got Save Our Souls by AU5, AU5, <laughs> AU5 uh, and uh, Lomaximus. Um, this has kind of got a bit of a human versus robot code red narrative. Uh, there is very explicit storytelling here in this track with the, um, I like vocal, I don't know, I'll call them samples, but just like the, the kind of person panting and running and talking about defeating some, some arbitrary thing that is sort of de decided to be a robot of sorts with the sounds. Uh, but yeah, uh, production wise, it's a bit of a brooding dubstep track with lots of mechanized sound design, which hence why I think it's a bit of a robot versus human thing. And uh, yeah, I did enjoy that storytelling. So it's all track. Then we've got Bang Your Head by Diesel and Heritage. Uh, Diesel being indeed Shaquille O'Neal. If you did not know that, I kid you not. If you don't know, this is this is a song by Shaquille O'Neal. So uh, the song is a little silly, uh, but it also is a, it goes a little ham. And in the end, I think uh, I enjoy it. It's it's quirky for sure, but in the end, it's something I actually want to come back to and listen to. Uh, I I do enjoy how like every eight bars, it kind of does foundationally have a bit of a change in the mix up of where the melody is going and what the sound is. It's not just like kind of going back and forth from the same thing over and over. And so it's uh, kind of always like keeps you guessing in some capacity. So I really enjoy that. Uh, it feels like it's it, it lends itself really well to repeat listens. Uh, then we've got Omen by Ross Quinn and Punctual. Uh, this is just your kind of very solid progressive house track. It's got a big sound to it and lots of room to breathe. Um, very similar to, I would say, like Manila Killa's Dusk album and or like a Rufus to Soul uh, without that kind of um, that signature vocal that Rufus to Soul has. Uh, but uh, production wise, very similar. Then we've got Eat Me or Feel the Burn uh, by Varian. Uh, the In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts EP is out now. Uh, and this is a very destructive dubstep track with a very intricate sound design, uh, something almost out of a horror film. Uh, I've just heard this song on the EP. I haven't given the whole EP listen yet, but I really enjoy what I heard. And I'm excited to dive into that EP in full soon. Then we got Heart Still Beating by Crystal Skies featuring She Is Jewels. Uh, this is the best Crystal Skies I've heard in a while, I must say. Uh, it feels like a bit of a throwback to around like 2017, 16, 15 era with its sound design, and I loved it all the same. Uh, leaning more into that kind of future bass, more so than Mellow Dub, which is kind of why it goes back to the 2016, 17 days. But um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it. It feels like a bit of a throwback track and throwback to whatever, what, six years ago. But uh, yeah, and this is also the first single off of a new album so uh that'll be exciting i'm excited for that i did i will say it, i didn't didn't love the last album but uh i'm excited for this new one if it's going to be more like this then we've got Earsoft Live Mix by Eprom. The Synthesism LP is out now. Uh, this track in particular has very fascinating sound design, um, as you kind of always get from Eprom. Uh, it's quirky and spunky, and I'm really excited to dive into the rest of this project as well, too, in the coming days and weeks. Um, so excited for that. Then we've got Witchcraft by Eptic. Uh, kind of a sneaky sound design. It's like a little... Ooh, like a little also like, ooh, what's going on here? And uh, it's relatively down, I would say, for an Eptic track, but remains quite firm in its kind of chilled out dubstep production. Uh, it's kind of a mix of trip hop and that kind of dubstep, and it's a blending of genres I haven't quite heard in a while. It felt like a really unique track that I was definitely on board with and really enjoyed it. And then we are moving into the standout category, and we've got three songs in standout, stuff that I thought genuinely killer tracks this week. Uh, we're starting off with Accelerate by Temanite and Skybreak. Um, if Mario Kart turned into EDM, uh, this song would be its theme song. It's got all the jazzy licks that uh, is from the sounds of uh, Mario Kart that would be, uh, with all the production elements and sound design both of Temanite and Skybreak. Um, the styles of both production uh, producers here meshed really well together, and um, you can just tell they had a, a ton of fun making this track, and I had a ton of fun listening to it. So uh, that was Accelerate. Then we've got Mirage by Kill the Noise and Feed Me featuring Tasha Baxter. A really unique structure to the song here with a down kind of 
uh, really minimalistic first half almost that builds into the actual bridge, not a real drop or anything, in which uh, Tasha is first introduced on the track. Um, that being said, her vocals are not that being said, but her vocals are great on top of that. Perfection is spot on. And I uh, really love the slow pacing to the track and the kind of long ramping build of the atmosphere. And I uh, really enjoyed it. Way to go. Kill the noise. Feed me. Tasha Baxter. And our uh, number one, my number one song of the week is uh, Pour Your Heart Out by R.L. Grime featuring 070 Shake. Uh, R.L. with some of the cleanest trap production, I would say, on this side of the 2020s. I've always been a fan of 070 Shake's uh, vocals as well, so this was just a match made in him for me personally. Um, this felt like a track that had a ton of huge star power to it that needed to succeed to do even be somewhat of a good track, and it just blew my expectations away. Um, I absolutely loved this. It's not anything too crazy out there. It doesn't, it feels right on, right on par with the uh, Sable Valley label and feels like it's, it's built right into that. But uh, yeah, oh, I just, I loved it. Huge fan, so. Uh, but yeah, that was This Week in EDM. Uh, let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below. I'd love to hear them. But uh, other than that, I've been Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.